episode 22, we're back again. Um, this week we've got Mo Morrison in. Mo, we've been trying to get you in for a couple of months now, but obviously you've been busy yourself, I've been busy. Yeah. Um, finally got you in, welcome in, how are you doing today, fine? Better late than never, yeah, aye, totally, yeah. totally fine. Um, Just get yourself into pre-season, you're saying? Yes, I started last week, um, How's Tuesday it going? night. It's going fine, mm-hmm. yeah, um, good numbers, um, new faces. So hopefully we can um, maybe add one or two more between now and when we get going. Yeah. Um, when does your season officially start? Um, our first game of the season will be August 18th, I think that it is. is. Um, so we've got a wee bit of time up our sleeve yet. So we're a good break. Hubby's come back looking in reasonable shape. Good. Some of the runs, early doors of the runs are looking pretty good. So um, we'll, we'll keep going. I'm away on holiday next week for 10 days. So um, Sarah will take over and keep the... Keep them ticking over, right. and then we've got a wee a week, is it? Um, to the first game, we've got a, quite an early game, and then a, a week's break, and then another game. We'll try to see if we can get a couple more after that. So, yeah, so far, so good. Brilliant. I'm gonna get straight into questions. We've got a lot to get through. Mo. Um, I put it into the Highland League group the other night, and I'm getting the questions. It was like boom, 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 boom. Aye. Some yeah. of them are tasty, like I tell you. Aye, I got the WhatsApp <laughs> boys WhatsApp group. There were a couple of messages pinged on there the last couple of days with um, a couple of question examples. So, aye, brilliant. Okay, first, first thing you've listened to podcasts yourself. You know yourself. How good a football player were you when you're younger? And what age did you realise you had a wee bit of potential? Um, it's one of those questions it's hard to answer without trying to be too big headed isn't it <laughs> um, early early days was just you know started off at East, East End Primary School um, brought up in West Murdy which a lot of really good football it's players I've, all years seen yeah, I've like. heard, heard that <laughs> for various people you've had on before but it's it's true there was an abundance of football players uh, coming from West Murdy Um and I think, you know, back then there was no Xboxes or things like that. And, and so, you know, as soon as you were old enough to go out and be with your mates um, after school or whatever, you know, it doesn't matter where you were or what you're doing, you, you had a football with you. And you might have been kicking it up against a garage door or, you know, Thomas Park. Um, yep. Just beside King's Malls was a Very popular. an area where a lot of time was spent by me and my mates. Um, there was a set, set of goals there. Um during that time as well, we were there morning, noon and night, you know, so it wasn't a short, you know, times where we were able to play football. Yeah. But when you look at what the youngsters have got available to them today, you know, they're spoiled for choice with and they didn't clean take air it. and things like that. And yeah, well, that's where I was just going. You see yeah. the amount of times I drive past, you know, it's, it's empty. Yeah. The high school is the same. Um, you know, I really wish we had that sort of. Mm-hmm. Opportunity when we were younger, uh, we would just find anywhere we could. Generally, Tommy's Park was the, the place that we'd go and spend hours and hours and hours, days, weeks, months there during the summer holidays, just playing singles or doubles, 3v3, just whoever turned up. Yep. yep. Um, and as I say, East End Primary School was probably start of the kind of football and team scenario uh, with a, a really good team there. Any um, other boys that kind of broke through? Um. Aye, you know the, the the obvious one would be Chrissy Clark. Yeah, um, was in the team. Uh, obviously went on to Aberdeen, Bristol City, um, and back to Aberdeen. I think after that, um, you Gary tell Youngson. That, you tell at that age, you got Chris had a wee bit about him, like. Or um, he, he definitely had something about him. No, yeah. there's no doubt about that. Um, you know, there was a few players. Gary Youngson was there as well. And obviously went on to play for Elgin and yeah. Lossie as well. Um, Josie McGettrick. Mm-hmm. Um, he was probably the, the pick of the bunch yeah. at that age yeah. going through East End and up into the academy mm-hmm. um, he was a phenomenal player to be honest Yeah, um, he he really stuck out uh, he was probably the pick of the bunch as I say Magic. Um, obviously got some of his talent for his, his cousins um, <laughs> John and Michael and them so no he, he stood out Murray Grant was a goalkeeper um, he was in and about the Elgin yep Youth set up at times as well, um, so aye, there was there was plenty of talent in the team. Um, I think we we ended up winning the league um, the final year before we, we went to secondary school. Um, so there's always a picture going about where the team getting presented <laughs> with the trophy. And um, Willie Wilson uh, was our manager at the time. He was a bit of a 
maniac for want of a better description. Did it help you? Oh, absolutely, it helped <laughs> everybody. His, his passion for the game was unbelievable. Mm -hmm. um, and he followed us up um, to the high school. He took us at the high school a period as well, along with Neil Wilson, um, who actually speaking to you yesterday. Um, and he asked me if I remember the time that I played in goals for the school team, right, wow. which I can't. No. Um, he said we didn't have a keeper, I volunteered and we had a, had a great game. He says, I don't know how he never became a goalkeeper. Am I right in thinking you were a striker in your early days, Mo? Aye, I, I get the mick tain quite a lot when I mention that. Yeah. Um, and people kind of don't believe me, but I, I, I do have to say, up to the age of maybe 16, mm -hmm. um, I was playing up front and was quite prolific yeah. uh, without being too big headed uh, during, during school, um, East End. Uh, academy obviously and then the boys club was all striker and then at that time um, we went through on a Saturday afternoon to play for Devon side juvenile okay. team yeah I've heard so a lot they, about them they, they did a great great wee youth set up um, at all age groups so we went through with them and we, we met him for the first time the likes of Mara Bruce and Chiz mm -hmm. players like that and then mm -hmm. obviously playing against teams for Aberdeen who later, along, later on in life um, he came up against who playing for the Aberdeen juvenile teams and ended up in the Highland League as well. You find football as a small world, don't you? Oh yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, you can't go anywhere. No. Yeah, I'm right in thinking you're a Rangers fan. Yes, yeah. Uh, yeah. Football idol growing up? Um, I'd probably say Ali McCoist. Um, I was obviously, as we said, striker in the early days, but um, being a Rangers fan, you know, Ali McCoy sticks out to everybody, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. um, the amount of goals he scored. Likeable guy as well. Yeah, yeah, maybe not at the time if he was scoring against you, but... Yep. Um, it I seemed think... to be him and the goalie. That was the two that just held back Sitlick in the 90s, like, for Yeah, me. well, Tommy Burns famously said, it'll be on his grave soon, the, <laughs> the man that broke my heart, was it? Something like that, so... <laughs> um, yeah, he seemed to produce his, his best uh, in the old firm games, Andy Gore, I'm not so Aye. sure. McCoy was someone else, you oh, know. Brilliant. He could all sorts of finishes as well. He wasn't a, just a penalty box striker. He no, was true. mainly scoring for probably inside twelve yards. But I remember a lot of goals from outside the box. One for Scotland at Euro '96 against Switzerland, and yep. you know he, he was a great football player. He wasn't just a goal scorer. And obviously he's golden, am I right in thinking two-time Golden Boot winner? Was that a two-time? Yeah, I know he I won think, it once. But I, think, I think it might have been I, at least two. Um, yeah, well, one of them would have been a game for a You wouldn't player. think so. Um, yeah. One of them was during the, the time where we we played um, Leeds home and away. I think mm. semi finals, Champions League, and things like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Marseille, yeah. Um, and then they ended up getting. Yeah, it was much disputed. That yeah, year, I do. <laughs> so that was a bit of a blow at the time. But yeah, McCoy was was a a brilliant player. Um, you know that team that we had that played Leeds. Everybody expected Leeds to. Aye. Run all over us, you know. Beat them home and away. Yeah, um, you know, and it really, it really put the Scottish game in the spotlight. Would you look at McCoy and try and do things to copy him? And that? Yeah, I mean, Aye. once you were Confidence really going in your head, and really, really, <laughs> really young, you were, you know, you were scoring a goal at Thomas Park, thinking about all McCoy with arms in the air and Aye. things like that. That's that's what happens as a as a youngster. But you do you you watch players and you you wonder how you can emulate them on the pitch if you mm -hmm. like you know even little things movements and um, you know how they play back to goal how they play going in behind and things like that yep. and you know eventually obviously went, was shunted back to centre half Aye. Um, probably because of lack of pace um, was was more maybe Teddy Sheringham than okay than, uh, good striker aye than um, a Wayne Rooney or a Michael Owen with, with pace running in behind um, so I think eventually got shunted back to um, set half Chico Was it a straight shunt there. back or did you kind of work your way through the midfield in that more? It's quite funny actually yeah I kind of worked my way back but then at the same time um, there were periods in the Scottish League when Alec Caldwell came in that I was playing centre yeah. mid so I'd went back and then started moving forward again. Okay. But didn't right. get the whole way um, up the top of the park <laughs> again. My, my days as a striker were were over. Um, but no, they were enjoying Everybody liked scoring goals. And, you know, luckily enough, I was managed, I still managed to contribute in the goal scoring front, even if they set her half a lot of the times. But certainly scoring goals is what the game's all about. You know, every That's it. every young player wants to be a striker. And unfortunately for me, it didn't, didn't quite work out. 
Well, my, um, my, outside first, of uh, my first time I came across you, Mo, and I'll, I'll speak about this to the end of this podcast, is Championship Manager. You're a defensive midfielder in that. Oh, so, right, okay. so you're you're in between like aye, in yeah, I'm not quite sure about playing with aye, it. pretty aye, much like okay. um, I can deal with that. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly wasn't a striker though. No. Nah, no well. <laughs> Worth yeah. a shot. I but, well. I uh, really enjoyed it. Devon side obviously was really good for mm-hmm. you know progression for a lot of boys. Um playing as a striker there was was brilliant. Uh, Mara Bruce for Bucky. Obviously yeah. ended up playing b- back at Bucky with him. Chiz was there as well, the same age group, um, so it was it was brilliant. Ended up at Ipswich for a trial as a striker as well. Um, ironically, played against Celtic and kind a of friendly for Jesus. them. Scored a hat trick and never heard for them again. <laughs> oh, right, wow. Yeah. Um, was it the Ian Rush tournament? Remember the Ian Rush tournament? I you heard of I, that. Um, I, I think so. I Devon side went to that and. Um, and we didn't win it certainly, but I, I, I was ended up top scorer, and I, I got a pair of Reebok football boots for it. Christ! Um, and uh, as I say, that's which were in touch. Asked me to go to Glasgow, uh, and as I say, we played Celtic. We ran over the top of them, to be honest. Don't know what kind of Celtic team it was, but it was it was like six one or something. Delighted being a Rangers fan yourself. Oh, absolutely! <laughs> yeah. Scored a hat I can never heard from again. <laughs> Everything happens for, for a reason. reason absolutely, I, as I say, yeah. it wouldn't have been. It wouldn't have been long after that. I was back playing centre half anyway, so yeah, it probably wouldn't have mattered. It's um, you'd mentioned when I was speaking to you, boys club and that award winners, anything like that. At boys club, you get any player of the years or anything like that. <sighs> the, the memory is a bit hazy when you go that far back. To be honest, um, I can't r- really remember winning any team awards. Yeah, but there are photographs, newspaper cutouts. Mm-hmm. Uh, my dad with trophies in my hand at the end of season awards at the oh, town hall I think one of them was with Alex McLeish who was at Aberdeen at the time Christ um, and maybe one with Craig Brown as well yeah I brilliant can't recall what the what they were for uh, it was probably the fair play trophy they gave to the worst <laughs> team wasn't it um, but yeah as I say I can't remember winning any team awards um, but there's certainly newspaper clippings of mm-hmm. um, me and them as a youngster were were uh, two guys I just mentioned holding a trophy. Yeah. But I couldn't tell you what they were for. Okay. Uh, early Elgin days kind of coming through and breaking in. What What was the progression for you from kind of junior clubs, kind of Devon side and things like that, into the Elgin setup? Um, well, Devon side was, <coughs> was like under, was it under 12, under 13, under 14, yep. under 15, but you were still playing for Elgin. Aye. On a Sunday, we used to play three games a weekend. You play for a school on Saturday morning, you play for Devon side on the Saturday afternoon, and you play for Elgin on a Sunday. I wouldn't have played that new No, weekend. you wouldn't have. Um, they're, they're too worried about overplaying and mm-hmm. um, tiring them out when, when they're youngsters. But in my opinion, you kind of kind of play enough fit about that age. Nah, nah. Um, so we were playing three times a week, um, and then eventually, as the Elgin City thing progressed, um, in terms of moving for the under sixteens into the first team, I started training with well. them. Um, yep. Was so it under eighteens at that time? Aye, yes, yeah. aye, yeah, aye. yeah. And was it kind of was there a few years coming through, or was it just kind of you were thrown in the deep end with the big boys? Like we were thrown in at the deep end, certainly. Um, we obviously trained a Tuesday and a Thursday night, and Tiger Porter um, was still heavily involved. Mm-hmm. Today w- yeah. was involved. Uh, my dad was there. Ali White, you know, all these kind of people were the ones who were helping out. Um, and then eventually we progressed to go into the first team, as I say. And I think it must have been about fifteen um, right. going in with the first team for the first time. Um, Daunted? Oh, absolutely, shit myself. Yeah. To be perfectly honest. <laughs> Um, you know, although we were playing on a on a Saturday afternoon, if you weren't playing, you were watching Elgin. Mm-hmm. You know, so you were in awe of some of the players that you were seeing um, when you were a youngster, being at Forest the night they won the league, um, things yeah. like that. Uh, it was incredible, and then all of a sudden you're thrown in at the deep end, as you said, um, training with the likes of Russell and Neef and all these boys, where you were standing watching them maybe yeah. six months earlier. You know, washing, dreaming. One mm-hmm. day that maybe you'll get your opportunity to to go and join them. Yeah. 
Um, so yeah, it was, it was daunting. You, know, you go into the dressing room and you see these people. And you're you're very quiet for the first wee while, but the dressing room was was so good. Um, you were seen brought out of your shell. Mm-hmm. A lot of characters in there. Um, and when Chico was obviously the manager, um, moved me back to centre half and seen a bit of game time. But you know the best thing I ever done. Um, age 15, 16 I went on loan to New Elgin yep. uh, for maybe 6 to 8 months or something mm-hmm. um, so was, as I say 15, 16, um, playing against men yep. you know, juniors yeah, yep. prop boys who would just go through you mm-hmm. without even thinking twice um, and it, it was the best thing I've ever done um, it, you had to learn, you had to learn quickly Very quick. I was still playing up front at the time um, so you know some of the Opposition players had worked all week, sixty hours a week, enjoyed their fit on a Saturday and their pint after it, and were you know no holds barred. Um, there's this young, skinny sixteen year old loon playing up front for New Elgin. I know, I know what he's in the end though after ten minutes, and it was it was eye opening. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was the best thing I've ever done. It toughened me up. You know, it really, it really proved to be the, the one of the best moves I've ever made in football. And I was quite lucky as well because it was successful. Um, we we won a cup um, up in Strasbourg, Granton, okay. uh, where we beat a very favoured Isle of Vale team at the time, who just won the league. Were uh, strong favourites to to beat us, um, but we we won three 0 Big Ryan Green scored a hat trick right. um, that day, so that was a, that was kind of the first seniors trophy, if you like. Yeah. Um, so it was a good night. And, Pretty sure I wasn't old enough to to be celebrating the way I did, but that was <laughs> an, another part of the um, the adult football life, if you like. You know, you had to you had to mix it in the in the bar at night as well. Oh, definitely, definitely. It was all part, part of the part of the culture, part of the process back then. Yeah. And did you kind of when you went back to Elgin, hit the ground running? Um, well, as I say, I was still kind of playing as a striker in New Elgin, um, and I was kind of in and out of the the Elgin team as a striker. And I, I can't even remember how I, it came about going back to centre half. Obviously, as I say, pace wasn't one of my um, forties when I was a striker. I think Chico knew I was quite big, um, and in that days it was part of the centre half model. Model, oh, aye. Um, it's coming back into play. Well, mm. yes, I. But you know, obviously, I learned a lot for Chico when he put me back in there. Yeah, Chico was some player. Um, you can still see it in training. Um, but as I say, training was just as competitive as as March days. Yeah. Um, you know, Russell, as I say, you know, John McDonald, Weed, Maggie, all these boys were solid. You yes. know, there was there was no there was no holds barred and in training boys are as winners well. Winners as well. Absolutely, mm-hmm. they they're you know very much turned me into the, the type of player I was. If you like, they would they would have kicked their granny on a Saturday for three points. Yeah. You know, yeah. and the dressing rooms were fantastic places One to be back then. Questions I've got further on, but I'm just gonna kind of throw it in just new mode. Do you think surrounding yourselves with these kind of boys like say Russell, Neefy, uh, John, be, boys that have been there, done it, won it, pushed you on because you won trophies just about everywhere you went in your career as a player? Do yeah. you think that was kind of the oh, making absolutely. of it? Absolutely. Um, the mentality of these guys, you know, put into you, yep. um, you know, gave you as a, a kind of core skill. Mm-hmm. You know, was was fantastic. As I say, the dressing was was a great place to be. Yep. Um, the, the banter uh, we had boys from Aberdeen, Duncan Ord, Martin, Martin Perry, who we mentioned mm-hmm. previous, um, and then you had Polly, um, um, Peter Hardy, yeah, coming from Cali. So yep. there was always obviously the Elgin Cali rivalry. There was a bit of banter in the dressing room. About, I bet. Um, Polly was called a Cali. Faster than more than one occasion, <laughs> um, but he he took it in good jest and you know gave as good as he's get. And the dressing room at Elgin at that time was was the best. You know, I'm sixteen, seventeen at these times, and you know going in there and having the likes of Russell, Neef, Duncey, mm-hmm. um, Canyon uh, from there, uh, all these characters. Weed was some character. There was never a dull moment with weed in the no. dressing room, that was for sure. No. Um, but the dressing was fantastic, and I think that's what helped. You know, yeah. you hear the, the old adage about uh, drinking together and winning together and things like that, and that's just what that dressing room done. I mean, we were training, and I was 18, and uh, Neely White used to pick me up on a Tuesday and a Thursday night for training. 
so nearly stayed in Glen Murray Drive. I was in Glen Lossy, so Whitey would pick me up. We'd go around for Ross McCardy, um, and then we'd pick up weed. We'd go to training. We'd obviously train, finish training. At that time, the club was open every yeah. night. Yep. So after training, we're in the, in the club, four or five pints on a Tuesday, four or five on a Thursday, play on a Saturday, and then stick the wages back across the bar after you were giving them on a Saturday night. Um, nearly white, you know, had the patience of a saint. He sat there with his tin of juice in his bag of salt and vinegar squares, just waiting for us to finish our pints. But it was it was some crack. It was it was absolutely fantastic. It was brilliant. It was, a, a, like I say, a really good um, step stepping stone for me, you know, mm -hmm. to go on and, and play in the, the third division after that and then to go on. And be successful in the Highland League. That Elgin dress room was unbelievable. You know, we still speak about. I'm still good mates with a lot of the people who were in there. Ross, especially. You know, yeah. we, we speak about the times we had at Elgin quite often when we're, you know, and having a beer and that. And it's, it was, it was it was honestly, it was nothing, Aye. nothing short of sensational. It That's was sick. just fantastic. The atmosphere in there was just laugh a minute for the word go. You done your training. You were serious as as anything during training because you were so scared of Chico as well mm -hmm. um, but the banter was, was second to none the, yeah. the long trips to Wick and Fort William and coming home for them it was just sides are splitting by Aye. the time you go back to Elgin <laughs> and then you got off the bus and you go into town almost the whole bus sometimes yeah. <laughs> would go into town it was it was, uh, it was second that was my best that was the best dressing room I was ever in and yeah. it was so early in my career so it was would have been really really hard to beat Aye. but it was fantastic I was in some really good dressing rooms after that, but the Elgin one was special, and being Elgin born and bred, and having the opportunity to to play with the likes of Neef and Russell someone. and all these boys, it was it was special. It really yeah. was. Do you think? Um, sorry, being kind of that end of Highland League era, start of third division for Elgin, was it a was that a mentality of you just had to win every game in that, in that towards the end? Of, we're we're going up. We're going to be the team going out of this league, so we have to win every single game. Um, yeah, I mean, it was going to transition quite quickly because um, some were staying, some were going. Mm -hmm. and there was already word of the, some of the players who came in towards the end of the Highland League period yeah. before we actually made that move up into the, the third division as it was back then. Um, but the, the what, there's one game that still hurts to this day. The very last game, Elgin's very last game in the Highland League was the Highland League Cup final. Um, at Keith against Cove right and we, we lost 4-3 um, we were up, we were down 1-0 and then we, we went up 2-1 big Alan Moyer uh, from Aberdeen he was another good player big spud we used to call him um, he got a couple Stuart Cameron another yeah. again another great player um, he got one as well I think we were 3-1 up and we ended up losing 4-3 Okay. Elgin's very last um, game in the Highland League. That's, yeah. a, that's still a sore one to this day. I bet. And obviously, as time progressed, played alongside some of the guys that were in that Cove team. Mm. Um, but that was a bit of revenge for them because the previous season we played in the Highland League Cup. Was it? It was a Highland League Cup. Sorry, it was the previous season. Can't remember. We beat them. We beat Cove one 0 at Huntley in the mm. Highland League Cup. And that was my first after New Elgin. I think that was my second. Yeah. Uh, Trophy, but that was a special one as well. You know, I bet. that was okay. still seventeen. I think at the time, must have been ninety eight. Was it ninety seven, ninety eight season? Yeah. Um, Polly scored a bicycle kick um, to one one nil. So that was that was dream come true stuff as well. Aye. You know, and playing for Rangers and everything is what everybody wants to do. And that's what I wanted to do. But when you realise that's not going to happen, the next big, the next best thing back then was was playing for Elgin. Yeah. So to win a trophy. Um, at that, such a young age mm -hmm. for Elgin mm -hmm. uh, was was magic, and as I said, the, the celebrations that night was unbelievable. We came back on the bus, Fay Huntley, obviously probably well oiled, um, got to back to the club and upstairs, and there was a few hundred people there already celebrating, waiting for us coming in. So that was a special feeling walking yeah. through the doors, and there's some pictures up there already. Eh, sorry, already. There's some pictures on the wall. Just as you go through the door towards the toilets, yep. on the left hand side, and there's still a few for that night. Mm -hmm. uh, for us all walking in, the fans, a couple of hundred fans being there, singing mm -hmm. and cheering. Uh, it was it was pretty good. Like things I'll never forget. Well. Getting a bit of goosebumps <laughs> speaking about <laughs> it. To be honest, um, so uh, that was that was really special. I've got 
another medal. We spoke about the qualifying and cup. I can't remember who beat us. I wasn't in the squad. I was still 16 or that, but um, I still got the medal at home. Um, we got beat. Something was, something's telling me Cove again, maybe, but I can't remember. We got beat. Um, and I was, as I say, he was really young. And Russell Mackay actually obviously wasn't very interested in his runners up medal. So he kind of handed it to me on the pitch after he ah, got right. um, <laughs> after he after he went and collected it. Um, so that, I've still got that. That was kind of was a bit overawed by that as well. Yeah, to be honest, that's brilliant. Um, okay, so I'll, I'll skip forward another question again. You won pretty much trophies everywhere you went. What was your favourite trophy? Um, I think the trophy was the one with Elgin. Yeah, yeah, uh, kind of gathered that. Like, like nah, that was I'll always be the favourite one. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously won the league, but that was with uh, with Bucky. Um, Elgin was the hometown team. I was still young. Yep. You know. Yep. That was that. Not maybe topped. That was that was really really special. As I already said, and as you say, yeah, I was lucky enough to to win more things throughout my career with various teams. Yep. Um, and. You know, the league will come a close second, but winning a trophy with your hometown team, you know, mm -hmm. at such a young age is, is something that I don't think can be topped. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, am I right in thinking you captained the club as well? Elgin? Yep. Yes, I, mm -hmm. yeah, there was a period. How um, did that feel? Again, I was, you know, I was proud, obviously. Yeah. Um, just playing for them was was exceptional, but to wear the captain's armband, um at times as well was you know a very proud moment my dad had spent a lot of time taking me through to Banff every weekend you know doing yep. various things you know, he's a big Elgin fan you know we're both season ticket holders and you know we watch Elgin week in week out at home um, so we're there all the time so you know it was special for him as well mm -hmm. um, you know all that trophy wins and things like that that was um, that I managed to do throughout the, my career you know a lot of them were you know, special and dedicated to my to my parents as well, who put in yeah. a lot of time, money and effort to to get me where I was. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, it was it would have been a proud moment for him as well. Mm -hmm. He just probably wouldn't tell me that. He'd <laughs> tell me what I'd done wrong in the game yeah. instead of saying well done. And that's probably continued with me with Lily now at the moment. <laughs> but um yeah, no, it was it was special, I'm sure. Mm. One day he might tell me that he was chuffed for me. <laughs> okay, well um Okay, who was the best player you played with and against at Elgin? At Elgin? <sighs> yeah, I mean, obviously you sent me these questions beforehand and I'm, I'm still humming in here. You can give me a couple of names yeah, if you want. Um, I mean, the, the, the one's four. Um, you also imagine probably, Russell. Mac probably straightforward. Uh, Russell yeah. was yeah. different class. Um, always the time in the ball, never seemed to be phased, you know work hard obviously, could play, his quality was there, mm -hmm. could tackle, never shirked a tackle in his yeah. life. Um he was he was fantastic Neef as well, you mm -hmm. know. Really, really good. Do you know how many games Neef's got for Elgin? Quick one. Ah, uh, five hundred and seventy three. Ah, it's over five hundred nah. games. I looked that up last night. I was like, I didn't I thought it was maybe three, four hundred, five hundred over five hundred games. Aye. Like Yeah, I knew it was over five hundred. Mm -hmm. Seventy three was a bit of a guess, but I again phenomenal play. I just used to glide up and down the the line, whether it be right or left. Yeah. You know, you could play on both both sides. He predominantly played on the left during my spell with uh, Alan Dunser, another good player. He was mm -hmm. part of the Huntley five in a row. Yes, team I, and things um, on the right hand side. So they they, they stick out at Elgin, mm -hmm. um, Russell and Neef, um, Polly, you know, Kenfe Carly. Yep, he was quality as well. Um, so they would they would certainly be the kind of names I'd be looking at against. Is there anyone when you came into third division that maybe ex pros or that that was still playing? Um, Wally Farfy, um, yeah. Dom McVicker, Aye. Uh, Dougie Scott. Came at around about the same time as Don. Mm -hmm. He was a, a cultured left, left-sided player as well. Um, so they were they were quality players, obviously as well. Colin Milne, who played up front. There's there's so many. Yeah. You know there is so many. But you know if you're you're speaking top of the three, you're looking at likes of Russell and, and Neef. Um, against again so many. You had Martin Stewart on um, the other week or mm -hmm. month. Um, certainly up there. 
Um, Michael Stephen at Fraserburgh. Yes, um, okay. always sticks out as well. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I would have been yeah around about the late nineties. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was prolific for Fraserburgh. Yeah, um, left footer again. You know, you you could hit him ten times. He would just get up and smile and carry on. One of the, all all the Fraserburgh players were brought up that kind of attitude. To be honest, Charlie Duncan had made sure that there there were. There, were, there was no shirking done. Yeah. Um, and in that days, Marino Keith was was there at the time as well. Um, I think I played against, I played against Martin obviously. I think I played against him and Gary White a couple of times. Gary White, another Aye. terrifying striker. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as I say, Michael Stephen, Martin Stewart would have been for Elgin. Yeah. During the Elgin times, Aye. two of the the standouts. And two, two players that could have probably played for Elgin at the time as well. Oh, <laughs> that's an idiot about that. If walked into the dressing room and seen them two there, you know you were scoring goals, Aye, that's for sure. 100%. Like, no doubt about that. Um, okay, time in the Highland League after Elgin. Um, been to quite a few clubs, Mo. <laughs> One so, or two. Um, can you just give me a couple of your favourites? Like, kind of your better times? Because, obviously, we know you, you won league titles at Bucky. Yeah. Um, one of the questions we got was for Ian Murray. Moby. Uh, I And he asked, uh, did uh, Moby single handedly win you your first Le- Highland League title? <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't sound like him, does it? I know. He lacks a bit of confidence, Moby. <laughs> um, uh, uh, he's obviously a tremendous player. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, he probably spent his best days um, at Vale and Frisbee. Yeah. Um, in, in terms of goal scoring and, and not not being injured, um, but he was still quality. He was brilliant. Could he have played at a missed, higher level? Do you think? Oh, yeah. No doubt about it. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. But he, uh, in response to his question, I'm going to say no because he was injured <laughs> the day we played Vale. Brilliant. I love it. Um, there so we go. so there's, so there's his answer. I'll get a, when this goes out, I'll get a text. I'm sure uh, mm-hmm. with some excuse. But that was that was a fair day. But yeah. He wasn't playing that day. We missed a couple of good players that day. Um, Sander Sullivan wasn't playing that day either. Yeah, oh, a great um, player. He gets a mention quite a few times yeah, in the year. Like, uh, yeah, another one. He, he was at Elgin for a wee while, but didn't quite last for him. They ended up at Bucky and done really well. So Bucky stands out as, as obviously one of the favourites. Yeah. Um, again, really good dressing room. Mm-hmm. Um, and r- enjoyed my time there. It came to a bit of... I don't know how to describe it. It came in quite quickly. Right. Um wasn't... Very amicable, probably would be the best word. Right. Um, but enjoyed it. I was only there for a season and a half, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a bit of a no-brainer when they came in. I was a free agent at the time. Um, and they just won their first title. You yep. know, so when somebody like that comes in for you, it's, it doesn't take you long to to say yes and, and go in because exactly. they obviously want to strengthen mm-hmm. uh, to go on and defend their title, which obviously we did. Um, and again, it was a great dressing room. Yep. A core of, of Bucky players. You know, in there, Jamie Shue and Zico, Mara, you know, boys who I'd known, certainly, growing up with Evan side. Yeah. Um, Zico was a little bit younger. Jamie Shewan, um, who just was some character. Um, <laughs> he'd be the first to admit that he's, he's maybe quality-wise, he, he wasn't at the levels of some of the other players in the dressing room, but he used the word desire a lot. And I've never seen a player with so much desire to yeah. play for his hometown team than Jamie Shewan. He was unbelievable. He, mm-hmm. he, he's a posty. Um, he used to run around his round. He was that fit. He made sure he was, you know, top, just yeah. in perfect condition almost. Yeah. Um, and he played a lot against for Bucky in a lot of different positions. You know, that players who you just go in there and say, "Jim, I need you to do this today." No problem. Hi. So that was a good dressing room. We had a, we had a, a really good dressing room there as well. Uh, Martin Charlesworth, Sander, as I spoke about, Dave McRae, who ended up going to Australia. He was quality yeah. and then Moby obviously and Biscuits came in yeah as well um, Kev Main you know mm-hmm. quality Kev goalkeeper Main. yeah brilliant you know, smaller Kev's... Kev Small was actually the, the club captain but picked up an injury it ruled him out for a big part and you could probably give me a, an answer here Mo you reckon Kev Main's the best Highland League goalie the last 20 years um, he's got to be up there at least oh, he's definitely up there I mean he's Go into it later, but he's, he's in my 11. I think maybe uh, him and Joe Marlin. Aye, yeah. Joe would be up there as well. Yeah. Aye, I would also edge towards Kev on that debate, yeah, but aye, absolutely. Um, 
No, definitely up there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got shadow of a doubt. Played with him at Lossy first. Yep. Um, before he went to to Bucky, so no, I could probably still play at the moment. To Aye. be honest, I think he did get a shout for somebody uh, to help him. He's a bit like Mini. <laughs> you know, the rent a goalie. Yep. Um, <laughs> And Kev ended up nay playing. I think somebody asked Kev and then asked Minnie. Minnie was right up for it, but um, <laughs> no, nah, Kev was different class. He did everything. You know, he uh, wasn't huge in terms of his stature. No, no, not at all. But he's, um, he's, you know, distribution. He could come and collect balls. Mm -hmm. He's shot stopping. He did everything. Kev could have played at a higher level as well, isn't he? Do that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Nairn as well, I guess, if you're speaking about dressing rooms. Well, I was just, one of the things I got from Martin Stewart was he's, he mentioned your partnership you had with Ross McCarty at Lossie. Mm -hmm. He says he says it was frightening playing against them. <laughs> um, and we were just as frightened, believe me. <laughs> I well played with Ross obviously at, at, um, at Elgin first, yeah, um, and then when I ended up there after my time at Elgin, the football league came at an end. Ross was still there um, and. Play both left footed, and very often you've got two no, left not. footed set of half. So I got the short straw, I played in the <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, I think it's probably best described as not a lot of pace, but you know, would again kick their granny for three points on a Saturday, right. me and Ross. Right. Um, no prisoners, no prisoners, yeah. Who did, did you have kind of an equal on your left and right back as well? Were they the same kind of characters? Um, generally, it was. Um, Gary Youngson with him playing on the left. Yeah. Um, who was quite quiet, mm -hmm. but equally as. Did you play with Stevie Dixon? Maybe not dirty, but Gary could put his cell in a boot if he needed yeah. to. Dixon was there. Yeah. yeah so Dixon was just kind of coming through. Mm -hmm. And so he played the odd game as well. Again, Dixon went no holds barred. Yep. No mm -hmm. prisoners. Uh, right back was uh, Sean Noble. Oh, uh, Christ, who, I, again, yeah. you know, had the, the mentality. He played in the. A bit in the Scottish League as well. Yep. So they had the kind of never so die attitude, and... attitude as well. Um, but yeah, m we were equally as square, uh, scared playing against Martin if, <laughs> if he was playing against us. If the ball was in the air, we were fine. Yeah. If it went in behind us and we were running towards our own goalie, then we're in trouble. Yeah, but okay. That's uh, kind of matches what Martin said about his own game, 100%. One of the questions I got from Martin himself in the group was who was your favourite centre half? partner throughout your career um, is there anyone that made the game really easy for you well, I enjoyed playing with Ross you know, Ross yeah. is still a good pal um, enjoyed playing with him he said it like it was yeah. um, got a ear bashing a few times for him um, <laughs> but I'd probably say uh, Sean Webb yeah. Webby was Webby was composed Mm -hmm. um, he was, I was going to say quiet. He, he was, a ball playing defender. He was, he was, he was a nice guy. Yeah, Webby, uh, the nicest guy in football. He used to get bald in, <laughs> in the dressing room, but you know, never heard him swear much or things like that. But he was quality. Um, yeah. he, the way he played the game, the way he read the game. Mm -hmm. um, we played a back three in there with, with Webby and Martin McDonald, Bobo. Right, um, and I think we complemented each other really well. Generally, we we done. We we underachieved with the squad we had at Nairn, to be honest. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd probably I'd probably go with that too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, best you played with and against in your Highland League days. Um, because you've given me some cracking names. I'm just going to point out a couple of names from your level. I'll go through it mm -hmm. uh, um, in in a bit, but. You got guys like Greg Main, Connor Gethins, um, obviously Kev Kev Main. We've yep. we've spoke about uh, Dougie Green, yeah, um, Ian Murray, and yep. Robbie. Yep. Um, you played at Huntley. Huntley, I've always had cracking yep. players in my opinion. You, you want to be yeah, underperformed and quite a good Nairn team. Mm -hmm. Who just says kind of the best you played with in that time? When you play as many clubs as I did, <laughs> you've got a lot of choice. Yeah. Um, uh, we've probably mentioned, I don't think we've not mentioned anybody who who I would um, bring up. Um, Is there anyone for you, like, uh, speaking about against the moment, anyone that you came up against in, like, the Scottish Cup or that? 
Uh, we had some good days with Nairn in the Scottish Cup. Mm-hmm. Um, the guy that plays at Ross County just now, striker, was was very good. Oh, Simon Murray? Yes. Yeah. He was at Forfar when we played him. Right. Uh, he was quite young, but you could see he had, his movement was really good. Mm-hmm. Really, really good. Um, I, I thought, thought he should have been in the Euro squad for Scotland, in my personal opinion. Well, that was a, it was always a tough task. You know, I never thought I'd say it, but we missed London Dykes. Oh, it's, it's um, crazy. But he was good, certainly. Mm-hmm. Um, nobody else really sticks out in Scottish Cup days, but, you know, Moby, all the players we've mentioned. Yeah. Um, Dave McRae mentioned him as well. He was, was quality, but mm-hmm. Geza, Geza would certainly be up there with Russell Mackay, I think, yeah. in terms of played worth. Mm-hmm. Cracking. Against, again, it's... so many. Martin Stewart, yeah. as mentioned, um, Michael Stephen at Fraserburgh, mm-hmm. um, Mike Beatty, another one striker at Cove. Nah, yeah, not nah. Yeah, name you heard it off in league. Yeah, yeah, he was really, really good. Did um, you ever come across Martin Johnson in the Highland League? MJ, yeah, yeah, yeah. MJ was at Peterhead um, when we went in the third division. Yeah, or when they went in the third division, and then ended up at Cove. So played against MJ um, quite a lot. Obviously, not doing very well in terms of his health at the moment but still soldiering on that's the type of player he was yeah. uh, a few years ago we did a 24 hour run thing for him mm-hmm. uh, raising was money it? for MND which is quite Just talking about MND we've got you mentioned Don McVicker yeah um, in year 11 and I, I read in the story last night about Don yeah. McVicker 41 years old MND yeah, yeah. himself like, that's right so it's it's mad how common that is in football, yeah, isn't it? It's crazy. Um, such so sad to see mm-hmm. anybody. You know, we've seen the rugby guys as well, obviously. Yeah. Um, Doddy Weir, Rob Burrows of of issues, so mm-hmm. it's, uh, it's terrible. Um, but Martin was a, an exceptional player. Uh, yeah. Again, horrible to play against, but he had the strength as well. His, you know, technical ability wasn't wasn't in doubt. But he was big and strong, and he had pace as well. You know, if he's going in behind you. Yep. You knew you were in trouble. Um, so he was another top, top striker in the Highland League and for Peter Head for a period as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, did you come up against Sid Mackay? Sid, I uh, played, yeah. played with and against Sid. Uh, yeah. Sid, Sid was uh, really good as well. I mean, I think he was still playing for Nairn mm-hmm. last season before Recently, he left. Yeah, he was. He's, must be similar age to me, 42, 43. Um, yeah, yeah. Keep, keeps him selling in very good, very good shape, mm-hmm. said, um, you know, which probably allows him to, to still be able to play. Whereas maybe the same can't be said for myself. Well, I think he ran, he ran the North Coast 500 oh, a couple of years ago, didn't yeah. He? He's done some, he's done some crazy things, yeah. It's, it's, it's <laughs> I think he's raised a lot of money fun. as well for, yeah. for various charities, um, but still fit, you know, mm-hmm. yeah, trim. Yeah. Looks after himself very well, but Sid was a good player. So Sid played with Sid at Forest and at Nairn, and then came up against him. Aye. When before I went to Nairn, then he went to Brora. They were a very, very good side as well. Yeah. And in Brora, when they had Sid, Zander, um, Gav Morrison, all these types Gav of Martin Morrison. Aye, yeah. I forgot about all him. These, like, yeah. All these guys, they were they won the high league a number of occasions. They were a quality side. Mm-hmm. The football journals is partnered up with the football hub. Sai over at the Football Hub does great work bringing coaches, drills, seminars, thousands of hours worth of coaching resources, knowledge. His TikTok videos are great. You can find Sai and the guys over at the Football Hub at the-football-hub.org. That's the-football-hub.org. Check them over. They're offering a 30-day free trial. Honestly, I've checked them out myself. I've been using a couple of the drills in my own sessions. The guys are unbelievable. Give them a shout. Size always on offer as well to offer personal advice. As well as a 30-day free trial, they offer individual packages for clubs, players, coaches, clubs. They'll offer grassroots club plans, pro club plans. A lot. Give them a check out, guys. Okay, we're going to move on from playing to coaching more. <laughs> Um, what do you prefer? I, I think I, I think I know the answer. Uh, yeah, everyone's the same. Everyone's yeah. the same. Ah, uh, no, no, playing, coaching, managing, kind of, kind of compare. Yeah. yeah, no, no, it's, it's no contest. Mm-hmm. You know, that feeling of just arriving at the ground. You know, 
hour and a half, couple of hours before kick off to Aye. get the crack with boys and be in the dressing room and go out and warm up. You know, start to get the focus on the game and things like that. You can't, you'll never beat that feeling of pulling the boots on and no. tying the laces I and think getting ready. It's the wee things as well, more like again, this sounds stupid, but a lot of people probably uh, relate to it when I say it is the smell of mud. <laughs> you didn't get the smell of mud when you're coaching, you get it when you're playing, though. Yeah, Ken. it's uh, well, it used to be deep heat, but I'm not sure they still use that anymore. Um, the Vaseline on the, the eyebrows and that, Ken. Yeah, the yeah. yeah, smell of the dressing room was good. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, you'll you, you'll just never be as if you're ever a footballer, you know, at any level, you'll you'll always prefer playing to doing anything yep. else, I think. Um, you know, especially if you're winning, aye, it's aye. A, plays a big part, uh, in the in your mood obviously after the game mm-hmm. if you're winning but the feeling of you know going out there and you know being part of a team you know yeah. digging your mates out you know scoring mm-hmm. important goals making important tackles you know keeping clean sheets for a defender scoring goals as a striker Aye. Um, you know you'll, you'll never never get the same so. feeling again you know I mentioned it's funny I mentioned um, making important tackles there I was getting sick seeing the Euros where Defenders would make tackles and celebrate like they scored a goal. Aye, aye. <laughs> it was driving me insane. I'm very much of the Roy Keane school, uh, Roy Keane school of thinking. Yep. Uh, when it comes job. to that type of thing, aye, that's <laughs> just exactly right. That's your job. Yeah. Um, celebrating. I think Scotland celebrated giving away a throw in against Germany. Did the goal kick? First or like goal that. kick was it? Aye, aye, just was, unbelievable. Ah. It just shows how tin pot they are. Like, oh, it was incredible. But, but hey, look, there was other teams. There was other teams. Yeah, I can understand in the ninetieth minute if they're, you know, a goal ahead and they've they've done something, maybe a wee high five or something. But you know, the players were kind of fist bumping and giving it the old yeehaw. Yeah, I was sitting watching and thinking, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> it doesn't it make any sense. No, it no. doesn't. Just you know, do your job. You've given away a corner. Realistically, you maybe shouldn't have given away a corner. I you could have done better. Yeah, no, it's, celebrating it's, it's it. True. So uh, it's, yeah, bang on the mark, more. Roy Keane's. No holds barred approach. I love him. Meets, like, uh, yeah, I think gets my cracking. approval. You know this high fiving in the tunnel that he speaks about. Yeah, you know cuddling your countrymen. Uh, That's crazy. I, you, I don't know how to quote him, but you know going on going a, to war, going on a hard tackling move. One of the questions we got in the group chat, and I love this question: is how many times do you reckon you've been booked or sent off in your career? No. Oh. <laughs> no, absolutely no idea. Most of them was down to an inept referee, to be honest. Because <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, one of the stories no we got was, do you remember kicking a Fort Martin player up the arse? Or what was it? Uh, kicking a Fort Martin player so you didn't have to go whip the following week? Uh, that was one of the ones that was <laughs> sent on the group chat. Um, uh, Jamie Mickey. Um, I don't remember it. I'm sure I didn't do it on purpose, <laughs> but I don't fancy the idea of going to work on a Sunday. <laughs> no, no, it's true. <laughs> there was always, always the. Um, Did you, you ever get a violent conduct in your career? Oh, aye. Aye. Yes, aye, there was a few of them. Yeah. Um, there, there was always a bit of crack with my mates as well that I'd somehow always managed to be suspended around the time of an old firm game. <laughs> um, but it was purely coincidental. Aye. Um, <laughs> But uh, in terms of number, Christ, I don't know. But I'm still getting yellow and red cards Aye. at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> and that's at the sidelines. Aye. Um, but no, yeah, I would probably suggest that 80% of them was, maybe more, were <laughs> probably justified. Yep. Sometimes you, you know, you have to. I think there was, there was one in particular that sticks out. Um, we were one and two, one. Um, Bucky against... I can't remember who it was. Um, we were 1 2 1. There was a couple of minutes to go. And uh, I think it was just a long ball, and the striker had won it. And um, Lewis McKinnon um, was playing alongside me that day, and the striker managed to get in front of him and knock it on. And it left me and the other striker um, going one on one. I think it was actually Neil Gold. It might have been locals we were playing. And uh, he left one on one. We're two run up. It was quite late in the season you know so things were nip and tuck mm-hmm. so there was no option he had to come down he wasn't going through and go uh, I tried to do it in the nicest possible way because I knew him um, played with him before but yeah sometimes you sometimes you've got to do that type of thing it's, you know I'm 
quite happy to get a red card in order to get three points Aye, quite right. every week that's yeah. not that's <laughs> a problem absolutely not a problem it's not, it's not even an option like you can no, you know? no that's it and you know I watch some football these days and you know it's not got the same it's not got the same I don't think players are, certainly have got the same desire to no to want to do well you know are, are not really concerned if they win or if they lose they committed enough they're, they're, they're not got the same Desire, you use no. that word desire that Shuin used all the time, but then I seem to have it. Yeah, you know, they're, they're more interested in other things. Um, whereas, as we said before, you know, I played with players and was taught that you know, if you need to kick your granny on a Saturday afternoon Aye. to get three points, that's what you've got to do. Aye, I was always taught when growing up, you kind of catch them, kick them. Yeah. You know, it's simple, but it's not the way the game's played anymore, is it? No, no, there's far too many. Well, especially at the at the professional level, you didn't, yeah, I wouldn't have lost very long at that. No, I know. VAR carry on these days, <laughs> although it's not the best. Let's be honest; it could be doing we've been putting the bin, I think, but mm-hmm. it's ruining the game. But certainly, yeah, it wouldn't wouldn't have went down well in the nineties, early two thousands. And if you no. used to go back even further than that, it would be even worse. Aye, a bit worse. Yeah. Point, a couple of boys getting done for assault and oh, things like that. <laughs> There's absolutely no doubt about that. Who's the hardest player you came up against in your time? Oof, hardest. Uh, uh, we've mentioned him before. Martin Johnson could could look yeah. after himself. Um, Martin Stewart could look after himself as well. Um, you know, all the strikers in that day. Were, mm-hmm. You know, if you you put them up in the air, they could they could handle it. Um, yeah. Craig Campbell, Cami. Cammy was solid. He wasn't very big, Aye. but he was he was strong. Yep. He's another one that would didn't mind leaving one on you. Mm-hmm. Um just to get the, see if he could get a reaction out of you. Aye. Um Cammy was a good player as well, but he was he was solid. He could look after himself. Mm-hmm. Um so they, they were all guys who you go into battle with yeah. um on a Saturday afternoon for sure. But I can well sorry, I'm just gonna position myself. Okay, uh, how did it feel to become Elgin City's first ever women's manager? Um, ah, it was good. Um, when it first came about, it was Kieran who kind of initiated the, the the women's team. Um, and the first, my first kind of role was just to help them out to get it off the ground. Yeah, and then so done a few open training sessions. Um. Did you get a big turn out? We did actually. There was uh, there was like thirty odd people the very first, um, very first session, um, and then Kieran just kept chipping away and chipping away and chipping away, um, and eventually I gave in to his constant questions and and so there weren't even questions actually. It was it was just you are going to do it, demands. <laughs> but it's been enjoyable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's been enjoyable. You know, last season I think we've done really well. Um, for the first season, you know, all the players obviously had only yep. been together for that sort of six month period. We started around February time, um, where we got the open trials going and we played the game against Bucky, the mm-hmm. first ever game. Um, so yeah, it's been really enjoyable. Um, and hopefully this season we can, we can kick on a wee bit further. Yep. Um, you know, the, the target is always to win games. The target is always to, to be as high position in the league come May as you can be um, mm-hmm. and that'll be the same same mm-hmm. thing this year you try to kind of install that sort of mentality into the, the girls as well and they've yeah. responded really well um, got some cracking players um, well, I, I watched you a couple of times last season and one of your standout players is actually your own daughter um, do you want to speak a wee bit about Lily? Um, ah, I mean, she, 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 player. she gets, yeah. she gets, she gets a, a lot of praise um, mm. I think she'd be the first to admit she maybe doesn't get so much for me. Yep. Um, but yeah, she she's still only 15. Um, she was with Cal, she was with Murray Girls, first of all. She, you know, mentioned Murray Girls and the job they do uh, yeah, in the local I'm area. They've went from strength to strength in the, in the last few years. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've been fantastic at, at getting girls in, playing football. And then, uh, I can't remember. Alison did tell me, the secretary, I think she is, how many girls they had under their belt now. And it's, Phenomenal. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, they're under. I don't call them under tens or anything anymore. It's their it's year of birth. Yeah. But you're you're looking at. I think they've got like ten year olds, and certainly under twelves, and all the way up to sixteens. And that's where in this area there's a wee bit of a gap. There's there's nothing. There's no under eighteen. Yeah. You know. Um, so that is kind of in discussion. 
um, or it has been a, a point of discussion in the past to bridge the gap because it is a big jump for 16s to the to the women's game. Mm-hmm. Um, and as I say, Lily started there and then went to she was at Cali uh, for a period. Um, Elgin City thing came about and she was still at Cali, but she she had that want to be to be in, involved, but she was still 14 at the time, so she stayed at Cali for a wee while. Mm. And then I think she actually signed for Elgin on her 15th birthday. Um, so she's she's enjoying it. Um, she's had a little bit of interest from clubs um, in higher leagues. Um, yeah. But at this moment in time, she's obviously going through exams and mm-hmm. things like that. It's an important couple of years, so the travelling aspect... Um, that's, that's a lot yeah it's asking a lot and she's she's quite smart um, mm. as well which she obviously doesn't get for me um, <laughs> so she's she's doing well in school so the, the football thing is and it's totally her choice um, in terms of moving on as I mm. say she had the opportunity to, to go places this summer um, yeah. but she, she kind of weighed it all up and the travelling aspect was um, was too much basically yeah. um, so we we're both still at Elgin. Had she moved, obviously I would have probably had to, to call it a day at Elgin as well. Yeah. Um, in order to, to get her where she needed to go. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, she's done really well. She's still young, got a lot to learn mm-hmm. um, yet. Um, we'll see what happens over the next couple of years, university and things like that. So um, we'll watch this space, I guess. Um, yeah. But yeah, she's done, she's done really well. Um, there's been a lot of younger girls who came in to join the uh, more mature girls who were there for the beginning from Murray girls who have done really well and then we've got the core of older players who are Aye. Have, have been fantastic for us we're, we're lucky we've got a, a couple of players uh, two three players that are based in RAF Lossie yeah experience who make a big big difference to the team yeah. um, with their quality they play for the RAF team and the combined forces and things like that so we're, mm-hmm. we're really lucky um, in that respect but again you know, we've got local players who are doing really well yep. as well. And as I said, just as before we started, we we're hoping to, to scan a couple of new players. Uh, we've got one confirmed that will be announced next week and then there's a, another couple of, well, there's another maybe three yep. that we're hopeful of um, over the course of the next couple of weeks uh, while I'm away in holiday. So Magic. Yeah, things are, things are looking up, you know, and the club have backed us all the way. New chairman's obviously our main sponsor in terms of the strips, so yeah. you know it's always always good to have that bit of backing from the chairman. Um, we've got a good committee who do a lot of work. And, um, one of the other directors, Chris Foot, has really really stepped up and done a, a huge amount of this. You know, just about ninety percent of the social media stuff yeah. and thing. We've attracted loads of sponsorships that we're really thankful for. The amount of sponsors wanting to come on board and help us out has been nothing short of amazing to be mm. honest since we started up and uh, we've seen I wouldn't like to say how many different sponsors we've got you know we've got sponsors for the strips short sponsors sleeves travel tops we've got individual sponsors for the players you know their home and away strips are all yeah. sponsored so it's been a really fantastic um, achievement to get all this and, and Chris has played a big part in, in doing that and, yeah. and taking the man you know we're, we're all pretty much self-sufficient in mm-hmm. terms of money um, you know we've got to pay refs and pay to get in the leagues and Scottish Cups we travel by bus to away games that are further than Aberdeen yeah. you know which can be quite, quite costly yeah they are um, and we're so unlucky last season every cup game over Edinburgh Glasgow every time Scottish yeah. Cup three times and then other cups down to, to Edinburgh and oh, it was crazy oh, I don't yeah. think we played one cup draw game uh, at home last season, no. crazy. So we spent a lot of money on buses. Yeah, you know, huge support for the club. Um, and G, the kit man, he's with us every game. You know, he does the first team on a Saturday, and he's just as professional and you know just as much into it on a Sunday with the with the women's team as well. Yeah, There's nothing, nothing too much for him. He's 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 somebody I'm going to have to get in here because his association with the club he's done uh-huh. everything he's done absolutely everything he's been the announcer he's been the kit man he's, uh, he's well he's still doing the announcing it's <laughs> a bit of a standing joke because he'll, he'll often make a mistake on a Saturday um, <laughs> during his announcements 
Um, so we, we travel to the games on a Sunday it'll be right what did I do yesterday <laughs> and I'll get a bit of ripping from me and Chris about what he, what he does but Aye. he's quite capable of giving it back if we make a mistake as well oh, I bet. but like. his professionalism you know it's just it's just as good for the first teams as it is for the women's team mm -hmm. so he's been a, a huge benefit to us as well Okay, well, I'm maybe just going to just hit the hour by the way, mate. Perfect. I'm really just going to get you to name one thing for the next question. What's the biggest difference between men's and women's coaching? The women are a lot cheekier. <laughs> 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 Definitely one of them. Um, I'm not sure there's huge differences. Mm -hmm. We obviously know like ability and technical and things like that. I'm not speaking about anything like that. Is, is what's the difference with like the characters? Is Aye, right, there's there's definitely characters in our team. That's for sure. Um, you know, the, I think the biggest the biggest thing would be obviously not being in and around the dressing room a lot. Yeah, you know, we've got to do most of your team talks and stuff. Yeah, long before the the game and on the pitch and things like that. Whereas you know, for the men's team, you're in about gene people up from the you know half one right to five to three. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's that's probably one of the biggest things. Um, the as I said, <laughs> I wasn't a joke when I said they're cheeky. Um, they <laughs> definitely got a bit. Of, you got a bit of bite back when you yeah. give somebody a bit of stick um, for something that they've done. But that's it's all taken in good jest. And as I say, they've done really well. Um, I don't know if there's huge differences. I mean, no. Technically, That's actually quite good to hear that. Like. Technically, we've got some very, very good players. You know, and the the I think the the good thing to see was the period last season from start to finish would be the the improvements. Yeah, in, in the mall as well. Mm -hmm. You know, and that just doesn't come from me. You know, we've got uh, one of the coaches, Sarah, helps, but I think they learn a lot from each other mm -hmm. as well. Yep. You know, and we've, we have got the. The, the older kind of mature players like Abby and Charlie, who the, the younger ones will be learning off of as well. Um, yeah. You know, Josie as well. Yeah. There's like a core of five or six players who you you would say that the younger ones are looking at and yeah. trying to pick things up from. Aye, um, absolutely. But no, it's, I've enjoyed it. As I say, there's not huge differences mm -hmm. um, at all. Um, it's been enjoyable. And as I say, hopefully this season we can... Maybe put a bit of silverware on the table, which would be a, a huge achievement. 100% more. We're well behind you, mate. Um, okay, let's get into 1 to 11, and then we'll get on our last couple of questions. 1 to 11 for Mo is Kev Main, Neefy, Don McVicker, Willie Furphy, Sean Webb, Russell Mackay, Neil White, Greg Main, Connor Gethins, Ian Murray, and Dougie Green. You need to put your cell in your own 11, Mo. No, no, no. no. Um, I'm not getting a game ahead of Webby and <laughs> Wally Furphy <laughs> couple of names we've got to pick out a couple of guys we've already spoken about but a couple of guys will go into a wee bit further uh, first name Don McVicker um, done a wee bit of research on him last night actually I didn't realise the story until I'd read into yeah. things but St Johnston fantastic player A lot. I've read a few fan forums on him and things and yeah. um, opinion seems to be on, on the consensus the same like that fantastic player yeah, he'd almost, you know, firstly a, a great person. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, as soon as he walked in the door, he had this little bit of aura about him. Um, you know, he was quite diminutive. Yep. I mean, he wasn't a, a big six foot two player. He was um, quite small, but he, he he carried himself really well. Mm -hmm. He um, he he was quality, left footed, really. Really good. Talk That's to you one of the things he kept getting bringing up was his left foot. Yeah. How good it was. Yeah. Um, talk you through games. You know, really good to to the young younger players in the team. Um, he came in. He was he was different class. Really, really was. Could play anywhere along the back line mm -hmm. if you wanted to. Too. Generally, he'd have played left back, but he was so good, strong. You know, he was broad. Yep. Big shoulders, and you know, he wasn't scared to. He's a bit no prisoners as well. Mm -hmm. You know, he would had to put in a tackle, he would put in a tackle. You know, nine times out of ten, the opposition player knew they'd been hit. Yep. Um, but he was just different class. As I say, the way he carried himself, um, he was he was brilliant, really, yeah. really good. And obviously, to come to to MND at such a young age was was a real, real shame. He was, yeah, he was really, really 
as I say, a person first and foremost, but as a football player, he was Top notch, fantastic, yeah. absolutely fantastic. Um, I've got Neil White. White, yeah, I, um, White sometimes doesn't get the credit he deserves. Mm-hmm. Um, Whitey's energies, levels on a Saturday at Elgin were, were incredible. Yeah. Um, you know, he, he played right midfield generally, we would have played a 4 4 2. Whitey on a right and shooty camera on a left, and, the, and they both had bags of energy. But Whitey was one of his biggest assets was his, his heading. You know, okay. he, he got up like a salmon for what yeah. a better description. <laughs> Um, but his, his energy levels um, and getting up and doing that line just you know he, he wasn't you know, Ryan Giggs or, or anybody like that he's more of a Steve McManaman okay. type player uh, yeah. you know, he, he didn't have the tricks or anything like that he, he would go past you in a flash mm-hmm. generally he'd stick the ball down one side and go past the other and put the ball in the box um, but what he, nah, he sometimes then I think what he gets the credit he deserves but yeah. what he was a top top player and I think you know when he left Elgin uh, he went for us obviously spent a, a lot of time there uh, and done well, uh, but I still sometimes don't think what he gets the credit he deserves. But as a, well, as I say, generally would be in my my eleven just about all the time. I think there's a core, isn't there? The, the, I've done this yeah. before. I've done this before two or three times, and there's maybe five or six who will always be in there. Yeah. But then you know, you think, there's, there's uh, yeah, there's <laughs> ones who come in. And, you know, some sometimes depending on what you're feeling at the time when you're picking it. Uh, Greg Main. Mate, aye, Easter. Um, I think he's probably the most underrated player that I ever played with. Mm-hmm. Um, he set our midfield, played alongside Toshi. Um, the two of them were formidable. Um, both good players, but you know, I just loved the way Easter played the game. He had a game a bit like Whitey, his energy. Mm-hmm. He had a bit of devil about him. Easter. Yeah, 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 he, him, yeah. Oh, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> um, he, he could play. Mm-hmm. Technically, you know, he had a great right fit. He could ping balls, you know, if he one end of the pitch to the other like an arrow. He, um, he was up and down. He'd contribute goals as well. Um, and again, a little bit like Whitey. Um, maybe didn't get the credit he deserved. Um, and as I say, probably the most underrated player that ever played with. But he was a fantastic, mm-hmm. fantastic footballer. He had everything that he wanted from a, a kind of centre midfield player. Yeah. He, he, he reminded me, when I first saw him, he reminded me a little bit of Rizzo. Uh, yeah, just the way he okay. went about his business, he, he could you know play short, he could go long. And That's a big and compliment. Now, energy like. levels it was was fantastic. You know he would make good runs. You yeah, know, strikers coming short, he would make good intelligent runs in behind. Um, so probably the most underrated player I ever played be, but was was quality. Phenomenal. Um, I'm just trying to pick out the names that we don't really know too much about. More uh, Dougie Green. I. Um, so that, no, I know he played for Carly and Elgin and things uh, like that. Um, again, sadly, no longer mm-hmm. with us either. Yeah. Um, Dougie, Dougie could have made it right to the top. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he was, he had everything. Uh, he was big, strong. He had this long stride. You know, when he when he opened up to go in behind or, you know, to sprint wherever he was going, he opened up big long legs of his. Nobody was catching him. Yeah. But his touch, his his ability in the air, just technically, he was unbelievable. Again, another muddy boy. Yeah. Um, and Mish, his wee brother, you know, equally a good player. You know, I was toying with him in the team at times, and um, but Dougie was he could have went right to the top. Carly took him to Pelly. Eh, Carly took him to Pelly. Pelly took him to Carly. Mm-hmm. Um, it didn't quite quite work out. Um, but again. He, he could, he, he's probably the one player in that team that could have went right to the top yeah yeah. just could have he, he had everything absolutely everything um, I first met him actually well I knew him for, for being in Les Murdy but uh, he was at New Elgin around about the time I went on loan as well mm-hmm. um, so that was kind of the, the first time we'd properly play together but he was I have to say, I'm repeating myself, but he, he had everything, absolutely everything. Yeah, brilliant, cracking. Um, okay, the last one I'm going to ask you about Connor Gaffins because I think we don't we know about Connor Gaffins. If you've watched Highland League the last twenty years, you know about mm. Connor Gaffins. But how good a striker was he? I, you know, just different class. Yeah. Um, the, the questions about best player, you know. 
played with and against, obviously played against them when I left, uh, before I came to Nairn, when I left. Um, but I think he was coming at the end then. But I think his best days were while we were all in Nairn together. Yeah. Um, he, was, ah, he was frightening. Mm -hmm. he was, he'd pop one in for 40 yards in the top corner. Yeah. But, you know, he would pop one in for the angle of the box the next minute. And it, he could finish so many different ways, volleys, you know, anything. He was just different class. His movement, small, yeah. you know, a little bit of stock, stock about him. Mm -hmm. You know, he was quite comfortable taking the ball into feet against big centre halves and, you know, holding them off. Um, one Highland League player a year twice in a row. Yeah. Um, during that period, I think we won one trophy. You know, so that kind of says how good he was yes. individually yeah. um, because he won it twice in a row and I think we only won one, one trophy. Uh, during that period mm -hmm. but he was aye phenomenal as I say could finish from anywhere in the bloody the, op the opponent's half almost yeah uh, free kicks everything Brilliant. just he had it all he was definitely up there in terms of the best of, I've ever played with Brilliant Okay um, if you enjoyed our episodes and you want to support us you can go on to buymeacoffee.com forward slash football journals um, it just goes towards helping with production costs. We're going to start um, doing some giveaways and that through the podcast. Um, it costs about £3.92, I think I worked it out. It's $5, but it'll convert it for you. Um, if you can give us a little rating on Spotify, I've got like 140 followers, something like that now, and I've only got 35 ratings. And if anyone wants to sponsor me, please get in touch. I'm still looking for my first proper sponsor for the podcast. Um, thank you very much for the last hour and a bit more. Really no, enjoyed that. It's been um, a pleasure. It's always good to go back over the, yeah. the old times, we'll call them. Yeah. The response that we've had from John's uh, John Teasdale's podcast was mental. Mo, you're quite a popular guy going by your a Highland League post that I put in and things like that so there'll be quite a few people interested in that but I'm actually for my next episode going to go forward instead of going back and we're going to have Marcus Goodall the current Bucky Thistle player in he spent his youth career at Ross County and that he's coming in next Um, last question is always the same Mo one penalty to save your life who takes the penalty? Geza yeah in yeah. the corner well every day yeah. Russell would be a close second but yeah Geza. mm-hmm Absolutely. Do you ever see him miss one? Um, probably. But, yeah. Um, Trust that man. Yeah, just hundred percent. Okay. Definitely him. No doubt about it. That's good because we almost had Russell for two episodes in a row there. Like, so. he was a close second, <laughs> yeah. as I say. But I've probably seen Safe hands, seen like. seen Connor took more, uh, take more during the time. Yeah. Um. So I would have to go Connor. Brilliant. Okay. Thanks, Mo. Been a pleasure. Thanks, Luke.